Hi, my name is Doug Lamblum. I'm a beef cattle specialist with North Dakota State University. I'm located at the Dickinson Research Extension Center at Dickinson, North Dakota. And we're here at the Lucas Hoff Farm. Uh, Lucas is one and his wife, Jolene, are cooperators in the a, uh, SARE project that <clears throat> we've been conducting for the last five years. But basically what we did in the research was to was to take a five-year crop rotation that had a, a diverse a representation of crops, both cool season and warm season crops that were both broadleaf and grasses. And then the other thing that we did is, is an integrated system. So we integrated beef cattle production into the cropping system. The goal was to get a revenue stream for both cash crops, which would be our wheats and our sunflowers and to get income from beef by grazing our cover crops, our corn, and our field pea barley crops. Very unconventional. We don't graze corn, we combine it. Well, in our system we graze it and we take advantage of producing high quality beef from this cropping system. Another avenue that we added to it, so we add another level of complexity and that was frame score size of the steers that we use. We used yearling steers in this particular project to uh, go from conception to slaughter. They never got marketed, they stayed on the farm for their entire lives until they went to the feedlot for a very brief time. We were able to graze these cattle for over 200 days of grazing from May to December, then sent them to the feed yard. These yearling steers, after being in somewhat genetically held back from their ability to gain their maximum potential, when they hit the feed yard with a lot of good uh, corn type diets, awesome. corn based diets and supplements and protein, gain four and a half, five pounds a day. So they explode when they hit the feed yard. And so it's a very short period of time that they're in the feed yard and very economical. The soil health improved dramatically. A dramatic improvement in soil health. So we got improvement in soil organic matter. We got an improvement in soil nitrogen fertility increased. And this, of course, uh, was the driver behind increased uh, crop production in the cropping system for all of the crops. And yet when we compared the, the, the spring wheat in that rotation system to continuously grown spring wheat, we found that spring wheat continuously grown yields declined, whereas in our cropping system, spring wheat yields increased to where we had a very remarkable ending amount and very, very good classic demonstration of what integrated cropping system will do in terms of improving soil quality, soil health, and the ability to uh, produce crops. We got to the point after the second year actually in the cropping system where we no longer applied fertilizer. So no additional fertilizer, the soil was doing the work. So we asked the question, are we more willing to be a situation where we work for the soil or will the soil work for us? And indeed, if we allow the soil to do what it's capable of doing in terms of microbial activity, nutrient cycling, those microbes will work for us instead of us working for the soil. Same key with the livestock. The small frame steer <coughs> gives us a better net return at the end of the grazing period than does our large frame steers. However, we have a flip side to that coin. When we put those large frame rapid growing steers in the feedlot, they have a better net return to labor and management than did the small frame steers. So it depends what we're doing and how we want to use these cattle. As we visit with our producers, our farmer cooperators that are actively involved in the SARE project, we find that when they have taken some of the principles that we've been doing under research and they put those under a farm situation, a farm scale uh, example, like Lucas Hoff did on his farm, like uh, Derek and Angie Ducart did on their farm and are doing on their farms, they found that what we were telling actually worked. And they were able to show increased net return to their enterprises by backgrounding calves grazing on harvested corn, by uh, grazing grain corn or a silage type corn, 
and then sending some yearling steers to the feedlot in the case of Lucas Hoff, he was able to return on some of his poorer quality calves that he didn't really want to sell. It, it was his lower end of his calves. He netted $617 per steer by sending them through the feed yard, and it worked. To add to that, when he put his corn crop on, when he grew his corn crop, he had a little more corn than he needed. We had a bad winter. It was tough. He couldn't combine. So he waited until this spring to harvest the corn. So he took $617 per steer uh, net return on his low-end calves and then turned around and sold $9,000 worth of corn that he didn't use because he sent the cattle to the feed yard. It's money, 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 and it's profit, profit, profit.